Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Things look a little different today because I'm actually recording, I'm doing a screen recording because I'm gonna be showing you some things uh, on the internet we're gonna look at. And so I've got my computer screen right here in front of me I'll be looking at. And I'm almost set up kind of like a podcast style, right? This microphone is usually boomed up uh, above me just out of frame. So I'm just using it in a different way today. It was more appropriate, I thought. So today we're gonna talk about um, what has happened in the last couple of days, actually February 6th, I believe. Um, yeah, on the 6th, the Jehovah's Witnesses in a court case in Montana were sanctioned. So we're gonna take a look at that court case and we're gonna uh, find out why they were sanctioned and and talk, talk about that. Uh, now this case, a lot of you already know about and may be following, but I may have some subscribers that this is new to, and so that's why we're gonna take a little time to dive into this subject and, and this court case. I'm changing my life and I won't look back ever again. Okay, so bear with me while I navigate my way around this computer. I'm gonna make myself smaller and gonna bring up um, this here. Okay, so this is a YouTube channel that broke the news yesterday. If you don't already follow him, he's, he's um, Vern from Fixing My Faith. Um, go take a look at his YouTube channel if you get a chance or if you haven't already. And so, He's the one that broke the news, at least maybe others could have too, but this is where I heard it from. And and he has all the links below uh, in his description, but I, I'm going to put them in my description of this video as well, so you can go take a look at the court documents that we're going to look at today. And he um, found it that the he found about uh, out about this um, from the YouTube channel Watching Watchtower. Let's just take a look at that. Let me see here. There it goes. Okay, this is the YouTube channel Watching Watchtower. Um, they have, this is a great source to look at. They pick, pick up news things all around the world regarding Jehovah's Witnesses. So anytime witnesses are in the news, anywhere in the world, um, they report on it here. As you can see, I'm just kind of showing you some of the latest things. And uh, including other, you know, like I said, other countries and all that. So they broke this news yesterday. Uh, right here, you can see it. And um, so let's go back. Oh, it's okay. So first of all, this case uh, in Montana is it's involving uh, CSA, child sex abuse case. Actually, it's a couple of cases. You might remember this case because the Watchtower's attorney, Philip Brumley, was fined an extraordinary amount. And we're going to read about it here. I'll have this link below as well. You can go take a look at it on your own time. We're just going to read a little bit about it. We're not going to go into a huge amount of detail because it's, it's just too long. But this, this Philip Brumley, he, um, it says, legal counsel for Jehovah's Witnesses and head of the legal department at their headquarters in Patterson, New York, has been fined $154,448.11. $154, On June 22, 2020, he submitted an affidavit to the United States District Court of Montana, wherein he used language that was an, quote, intentional and sustained effort to deceive the court, unquote. The affidavit was used in two cases involving child sexual abuse. And then it, it lists there the, the uh, plaintiffs. Um, okay, and then moving on, on June 22nd, 2020, Philip Brumley submitted a two and a half page affidavit on behalf of Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania to the U.S. District Court of Montana. The purpose of the affidavit was to identify the roles and purposes of these legal entities at the time that the alleged incid incidences of child sexual abuse took place in the 1970s and 1980s. But here's what Brumley did instead. 
Brumley's affidavit was curiously written in the present tense. Curious because of the crimes curious because the crimes of child sexual abuse took place in the past and the purpose of the affidavit was to describe the role of both corporations as they operated in the past instead he described both corporations as they operate presently so he was being sneaky basically he was being sneaky We'll go ahead and read another paragraph here because I just think it's um, really important. Philip Brumley simply described Watchtower New York as a publisher that, quote, was organized and exists under the laws of the state of New York as a nonprofit or not for profit religious corporation, unquote. He described Watchtower Pennsylvania as a nonprofit religious membership corp- corporation with quote, its own assets, liabilities, offices, board of directors, and offices separate from every other entity used by Jehovah's Witnesses, unquote. He claimed it is not the direct or indirect parent or subsidiary of any other corporation. He said it has never been registered to conduct business in Montana and has no contact with congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in Montana. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I got to read that again. Sorry. He said it has never been registered to conduct business in Montana and has no contact with congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in Montana. He further stated that it does not establish or disseminate policy or procedures, appoint or remove elders, ministerial servants, or publishers. Instead, he says, Watchtower Pennsylvania exists, I'm quoting, Watchtower Pennsylvania exists to provide certain business needs to Jehovah's Witnesses, including, among other things, holding copyright, unquote, and, quote, provides international human humanitarian aid to communities after natural disasters, unquote. So that that was how he tried to spin it. He tried to spin it that they really have nothing to do with the congregations in Montana, that they they don't oversee them. And, you know, I, I just couldn't believe that. I could not believe that. Um, so I, I, you can go on and read more, but... Basically, they caught him in a lie. And and now we're going to take a look at um, what happened two days ago. And I will have a link to this uh, as well. This is a 40 page document. Let me get let me get up to the top here. Hold on. Okay, so you can take a look at this document, uh, the plaintiffs, this Tracy and Camilla. I'm not going to try to even say their last names, but um, They, you know, were asking for sanctions on them because they were, because the witnesses were not forthcoming with things that they asked for. Uh, For example, they omitted substantial information concerning the Jehovah's Witnesses governing body and the relationships among several of the organization's entities that plaintiffs later discovered on their own. Uh, Okay, then it just says, for the following reasons, the court grants plaintiff's motion as to the allegation that Watchtower New York failed to comply with the order and denies plaintiff's motion as to the requested remedy. Instead of prohibiting Watchtower New York from presenting certain defenses and evidence, the court will order certain designated facts as established and impose monetary sanctions. Now here on page three, he, they, they just outright lie here on, on page three. Um, it, I'm trying to think where I want to start here. We'll just start where it says, during the, jurisdi- during the jurisdictional discovery and before Watchtower Pennsylvania withdrew its motion, plaintiffs, plaintiffs served a number of inter- inter- oh my goodness, I always can never say this word, intera... <laughs> Interrogatories on Watchtower New York and Watchtower Pennsylvania, including interrogatories 9 and 15. Interrogatory 9 asked, and I'm sorry, I'm probably saying that word wrong. I I, I, I can't say it right. Um, but nine, that interrogatory 9 asked, quote, identify what the governing body does, where it is located, what it is responsible for, how it 
makes decisions, etc. Unquote. In its original set of answers, Watchtower New York objected to interrogatory nine, then without waiving its object waiving its objection, responded. The governing body is a small group of spiritually mature Christians who provide spiritual guidance to Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide. The governing body follows the pattern set by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem in the first century who made important decisions on behalf of the entire Christian congregation. Like those faithful men, the members of the governing body are not leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses. The governing body serves in Warwick, New York, USA. Can you believe that? I get, I'm going to read that again. Like those faithful men, the members of the governing body are not leaders of Jehovah's Witnesses. I'll tell you, these little weasels, they, they will try to weasel their way out of anything to protect their assets. But they do not protect the victims. Or compens- try not, they try not to compensate their victims. I mean... They're, they're going through, you know, lawsuits left and right. So l- people are getting compensated, but not without a fight. And that is sad. That is sad. Um, okay, so now we're going to go down towards the end. You can read about this. Like I said, I'll have the description below. If you like to get into all the legal stuff. But I'm just going to kind of come down here to the conclusion. Page 37. It is so ordered. Plaintiffs Tracy and Camellia motion for sanctions is granted. As to Watchtower New York's failure to comply with the order and the need for a remedy and denied as to plaintiffs requested remedy. Two, the following facts are deemed established. A, the governing body adopts guidelines for the qualifications for the appointment of local elders based on the Holy Scriptures. B, the governing body approves all letters to congregations concerning matters of policy. I'm not going to read all of this because it gets kind of long. Uh, D, the governing body has the ultimate authority to bar a person from serving in positions of responsibility with the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. The governing body establishes policies and procedures for local congregations, local congregation elders to investigate and respond to allegations of serious sin, including child sex abuse. The U.S. branch office puts on training conventions to teach local elders how to do their jobs. G. Elders direct questions on how to follow Jehovah's Witnesses policies to the U.S. branch. Let's see. Jehovah's Witnesses Circuit overseers visit local congregations and report on their activities to the U.S. branch office. From the 1970s to 2001, the U.S. branch office worked in concert with Watchtower New York to inform local congregations of the appointment and removal of elders. J, the U.S. branch office in the U.S. Division of the Jehovah's Witnesses Organization, where central control over U.S. congregations is based. Uh, let's see. O says from the 1970s to 2001, the U.S. branch office assisted local elders in administering discipline to local congregation members who committed serious sin. And P, local congregations could not exist. I'm sorry. Yeah, could not exist without the express express permission of the U.S. branch office, which includes Watchtower New York and the governing body. So here's the end. Number three, within 30 days of this order, plaintiff's counsel shall file a pleading setting forth the amount of expenses and attorney's fees recoverable for their work, finding the attached exhibits, not disclosed to them in discovery and preparing the instant motion. Plaintiff's counsel also shall file an affidavit itemizing these expenses and fees within 30 days of this order. Watchtower, New York, shall have 14 days thereafter to respond. The court will then issue a second order specifying the amount of the sanctions and uh, amount of the sanctions award and setting the time of payment. And there it is, signed by Susan Waters, Judge Susan Waters, U.S. District Judge. So, you know, you can see the corruption. Okay, let me get myself back up here. Um, Woo. 
okay, so you can see the, the corruption that goes on. You know, they try to portray themselves as, you know, people that don't lie. They go by the Bible. They're these innocent people, but really they're not. They don't have any problems lying. We've seen it in the past. You know, if you've seen the court case in Canada where the attorney outright lies um, out of how they treat disfellowshipped ones. I'll try to put a video of some of this together. I, but most people have seen it on other YouTube channels. It's been covered, but I might have some subscribers that haven't. So I'm at some time at some point might try to put a video together. But then we saw Jeffrey Jackson, who totally lied on stand in court in Australia regarding the Australian Royal Commission about all those sex abuse cases over there. Um, and so they 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 have no problem lying. If it, if it will protect their assets, protect their ass, they have no problem lying, you know, but forget protecting the victims or compensating victims. They, they'll, they'll fight that, you know? So it's, that's just really sad, but, um, it's good that this news is coming out. So it, because it, it's exposing them. So anyway, that's it for today. So I hope you like the setup today. I might try it again in the future. But until next time, keep positive, and I'll see you on the next video. I'm changing my life and I won't look back ever again.